Hello and welcome to Tete a Tete, France 24's flagship interview show. Our guest today is Maria Corina Machado. She was designated a few weeks ago through a popular vote as the candidate of the opposition for next year's presidential election in Venezuela against Nicolas Maduro. She joins us from Caracas. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you, my pleasure. This Sunday, the Maduro regime organized a non-binding referendum on whether the region of Esequibo, which is neighboring uh, Guyana, belonged to Venezuela. A total success. This is how Nicolas Maduro described it, with more than 90% of the votants saying yes. Is this indeed a total success in your eyes? Well, absolutely not, and unfortunately, because we all know that the Ezequiel territory belongs to Venezuela, and this is strategic to the Venezuelan people or our nation, and we have defended for generations. But on the contrary, this referendum not only was unnecessary, but inconvenient, but we all know that the, uh, the, the fight, the controversy is being now disputed at the International Judiciary Court. And it's there where we need to put our arguments together. Uh, on the other hand, what happened this Sunday in Caracas is, was, was a total failure for the regime. The images speak for themselves. People simply did not show up, even though they were threatened, even with losing their food stamps or their jobs. And uh, this is certainly a huge defeat for Nicolás Maduro and his regime. Did you go to vote because you didn't want this referendum? Absolutely not. I think, it, as I said before, it was inconvenient for Venezuelan's uh, rights that are being now disputed at the International Judiciary Court. Uh, after the votes, Nicolas Maduro announced that Venezuela would get this region back, that a new and, I quote him, powerful phase was about to start. Uh, do you fear, as some, as Brazil, as we've heard, uh, that there could be a military intervention uh, that could maybe uh, put uh, the uh, electoral calendar in your country into question? Well, the fact is Nicolás Maduro and the regime are desperate because they know they have already lost the election. I mean, more than 85, 90 percent of the people re rejects the regime, as we saw this weekend and as we saw on the October 22nd with, with a huge turnout in, on the primaries. So they're, you know, uh, in the past been able to do absolutely crazy things and they're desperate uh, at this point. But I do believe that uh, uh, the sense and, and, and the um, rational uh, thoughts, not only of other sectors among the regime, and but also in the Venezuelan military, will prevail, and that we will do what we should do, which is present a very strong and well-supported argument at the court, which we need to convey before April, so that the Esequibo territory will, will prove that it belongs to Venezuela. Uh in late October, uh, you won a popular uh, vote to uh, be uh, the opposition uh, candidate. Uh, does this mean that for sure you will be uh, the only candidate of the opposition against Nicolas Maduro? I'm asking this because uh, we've seen in the past that the opposition is often very divided. Uh, is there a guarantee that you will face Nicolas Maduro and no one else? Well, no one can guarantee that the regime will perhaps promote another individual uh, with the idea of dividing the, the, the will of the people. But um, it was so strong, so profound, so emotional what we lead on October 22nd. Uh, you know, it was a three times or four times our best estimate that actually the amount of people that came out. We, we ran out of ballots in many places, even though people were, as I said before, threatened in order not to participate. So I do think that uh, that will not work. And that certainly uh, Venezuelans today, we are more united than ever. And we're conscious that we do have a huge opportunity to defeat this regime and move ahead in a very complex and delicate transition to democracy. 
Right. Uh, there is still an obstacle uh, to you being able to run. Uh, the regime uh, claims that you're ineligible. Uh, there were negotiations in the last few days uh, conducted through Norway, obviously with the U.S. Uh, involvement, and there seems to be a compromise. You will be able uh, to uh, lodge a complaint before the top uh, court to clear your name. Uh, will you do so? And do you believe uh, that this is the last obstacle to your candidacy? Certainly, it is not the last um, uh, obstacle to, for, to free and fair elections in Venezuela. I mean, this is a path that will be full of huge threats because the re regime knows that they will lose power. And I will face Maduro. And certainly the international community and the U.S. have been uh, very firm in terms that they will not get uh, ben uh, benefits and, and, and sanctions will not be removed if there are not free and fair elections. And you cannot talk of free and fair elections if the people's uh, choice for their candidate and leader is not permitted to participate. So, uh, as I said before, this will be, you know, full of, of, of uh, threats, and, uh, I'm, but I'm sure that we have the strength and the will to fight to overcome every single one of them, and we will see Venezuela free and rebuild with a, with the participation of all of us, those who are here and all around the world. Yes, but, but do you believe, uh, just to be very precise, will you go before uh, the court in Venezuela uh, to do what was agreed uh, in the last few days to be able to run? That has not been decided yet because the regime has not complied with what they had uh, said they would do before uh, November 30th. Uh, political prisoners have not been freed. And the fact is that if they not uh, comply and with what they offered, they, they certainly will not do that with my uh, illegal, illegal uh, disqualifying. So we are you know, moving ahead day by day, but I can assure you that I will be the candidate that faces Nicolás Maduro and defeat him in the presidential elections next year. Well, clearly, uh, from what you're saying, there's a lack of trust in, in the regime. And in the past, uh, you thought that this lack of trust uh, was warranting a boycott of the election. Now you're saying, I will face Nicolás Maduro. How can you be so sure uh, that there will be first of all, elections, and that they will be free and fair and will allow you to, to win after uh, all this history that I just mentioned? Well, we certainly have no, no trust whatsoever. You just have to see what happened two days ago. When, they, when we saw all the streets empty, no one came out to participate, and then they say that over 10 million people uh, did come out. So we certainly realized that we need to do a lot of work and a lot of pressure and I believe that has to be done uh, um, with the international community uh, working together with us in order to have those conditions change. But we're certainly not the same people and the regime is not the same. They have lost, they totally lost their social support that uh, we've seen in these last two events. And uh, the capacity for social control and repression has been declining as well. The regime has no resources, no money whatsoever. They have sack the country, and that's the reason why they are so eager to come into conversations and negotiations with the U.S. So they are not in a, in a comfortable position, and on the country, we even as long as realize this is an opportunity we will not lose. But we're not moving with naivety or, or with a sense that we've already won, even though we know we have the huge majority support. Right. In the past, you advocated for uh, very strong sanctions against the regime and even uh, military intervention uh, from uh, abroad. Have you changed your position on those issues? The only intervention I have uh, supported in the past has been humanitarian intervention. And uh, yes, I've been uh, very um, supportive of, of important sanctions against the regime because uh, the resources the regime was receiving were used uh, to, to, to buy arms for repression and persecution. Uh, nowadays, it wouldn't be possible to talk about a dialogue and negotiations if there weren't sanctions to remove. And that's, that's the truth, and, and we need to face it uh, as, as it is. 
Uh, but certainly we have a huge opportunity now. Venezuela is a totally different country. The regime is in its weakest position ever. And finally, the international community has come to understand that we're dealing with a criminal regime uh, that has an open investigation in the international criminal court. So we, we certainly realize this is not an easy task, but at the end, um, we know we will prevail because we are a freedom-loving country and we want our children back home. We have a fourth of our population that have been forced to leave our country and we want, we want them back home. Just as a last question, obviously uh, you uh, described uh, Nicolas Maduro uh, as I would I can assume someone uh, you don't really uh, trust and you think should be a prosecutor. Nevertheless, uh, if there is an election, uh, this means you would have eventually to sit down with him and talk. Is that realistic? Oh, certainly. That would certainly be, be useful. And even before the election, because I do think we do need to have negotiations, serious ones that give guarantees to parties and to facilitate a peaceful and sustainable transition in Venezuela. And I'm more, I am more than willing to do that. Maria Corina Machado, that's all we have time for. I want to thank you very much for appearing here on Tete a Tete, France 24's flagship interview show from Caracas. Thank you all for watching it.